Hello and welcome to our monthly webinar series from Zenata Consulting. I'm Wayne Martin and we're going to be kicking off the year with Marketing Automation 2.0, doing a full product overview. I know many of you have been waiting for this overview, let alone this release, I'm sure for quite some time. So I'm going to be flying solo on this one, but I'm going to cover all of the key essentials of everything you need to know for Marketing Automation 2.0 to get you started. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the agenda, but before we do, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And if you have any questions as I'm kind of going through this, I'm not going to answer them in this video, but be sure to leave them in the comments or in the uh, little side scrolling bar to the right of me right now. And I will go ahead and uh, do my best to answer those questions either during or after the uh, webinar. So let's go ahead and take a look at the agenda. All right, so the agenda for this uh, Marketing Automation 2.0 webinar. Uh, first, I'm going to go ahead and dive into the product overview and settings, just kind of do a top-down run-through of everything that's included inside of the application. Uh, next, I'm going to dive into connecting the CRM, connecting the leads and contacts module, and then going ahead and installing the WordPress um, PageSense plugin that you'll need for uh, tracking. After that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the email marketing features of Marketing Automation 2.0. So this will include setting up your topics and segments, sending out a campaign, and utilizing journeys, which is essentially workflows. Um, and then after that, we'll go ahead and look at the lead generation uh, tools within Marketing Automation. And then lastly, look at some of the website analytic features, which are similar to Sales IQ and PageSense. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight into the product overview and settings. Okay, so for the product overview, I'm going to give a quick breakdown of all of the features here on the left, and then I will go ahead and go over the settings. Most of these I'm going to go over in more detail throughout the rest of the webinar. Uh, so I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible here on the left. So first we start with our dashboard. When we come in here, it gives you a nice breakdown of a lot of the core metrics you'd want to see as a marketer. So contact life cycle, uh, deals one, total revenue, average revenue for contact, marketing qualified leads by source, contact by source, revenue by source, um, in contact life cycle over time. Uh, unfortunately, this instance of marketing automation is new, so there isn't a lot of data for me to show you what it fully looks like in here. Um, but just know that all of these features are here as I'm kind of running through it. Uh, next, something unique to marketing automation, you've got a nice contact dashboard, which can give you different reports and snapshots of contact summary, stage stats, source stats, and location. So I think there should be one in here so you can kind of see what that looks like. Um, the breakdown in the stage stats and source stats. Next, we have view contacts. So I put myself in here. And it's got a nicer view than Zoho campaigns. So this would be where all of your contacts reside once you start setting up your syncs with the CRM or just importing your list to marketing automation. And you've got a nice breakthrough when you click on the contacts of their overview, their subscriptions, you know, have they turned off email or SMS, um, their engagements and the timeline of their various activities inside of marketing automation. Next, we jump into list. Uh, list and segments are lists are essentially static. And then segments are going to be your dynamic lists that pull from this CRM or segments, I should say. Uh, I'll go over these in more detail here in a bit. Next, you have topic management. Um, these are where you manage your various topics of who you are marketing to. Um, and I will go over these as well with list and segments here shortly. Uh, next, you have lead qualifications, so you can go ahead and set up scoring rules that is uh, pre-baked into marketing automation. So you can add some website activities, uh, field-based scoring. Um, you also have all of these email campaign-based scoring. 
So you have your unique opens and opens. Keep in mind a unique open is the first time they open it, and then after that it's considered an open. Same goes for clicks. Um, but you can go ahead and adjust these, and as they interact with your different email campaigns, that will basically move them along the different stages here, um, which you can go ahead and add a custom stage or edit these uh, ones that Zoho has predefined for you. And lastly, you can go ahead and set up tags here. Next, you have lead attribution reports. So once you go ahead and set up the qualifications and get these different settings configured, you can go ahead and generate reports um, based on your marketing efforts. Um, real quick and easy inside of Zoho uh, marketing automation. So you can select a range and the attribution model um, that you want to create a report on. Moving along, so it's through contacts. Next, we have lead generation. This section is essentially going to be your forms and pop-ups and landing pages. So, so similar to Zoho landing pages, you have um, a version of it inside of marketing automation and same with sign-up forms and pop-ups. And pop-ups, you can make a pop-up. So let's say podcaster is then pop-up. And we can go ahead and set a URL. And once you have your website linked, which I'll go over in a minute, you can go ahead and set a pop-up. So let's just choose this newsletter. And we're not going to edit it, but you can go ahead and edit it. And we'll launch that for now. And we'll come visit the website here in a bit and see how that pops up. Because I already have the website linked. Um, and you can create custom landing pages. So these are all ways to get leads into your marketing funnel. Next, we have journeys. Journeys are essentially workflows. So if you use Zoho campaigns, these are your workflows. Uh, they're called journeys in marketing automation. And I will go ahead and we'll walk through a journey here in a bit um, later on in the webinar. Uh, next, you have your marketing planner. This is unique to Zoho Marketing Automation. So you can create as many different planners as you want for you and your team to kind of live in. Um, you know, set due dates, add activities, you know, have a Kanban board of activities. Um, you know, a great way to stay organized for a marketing team. Next, you can go ahead and set budget and create your expenses and set your planners. Um, and then create reports based on your different goals and budgets and add contacts in here. So nice little feature baked in so your team can live with inside this app. It's ultimately like all of the tools. If you're on Zoho one, you might not want to use the tools baked inside of marketing automation, but they are all here for you to use. Next, you have marketing campaigns. So this is where you would send your one-off emails, uh, your email campaigns. So I will go ahead and go over these here later on in the webinar. Um, it has its own version of Zoho Social baked in. So if you wanted to just send a one-off social campaign, you can go ahead and do that directly from the application. You've got your SMS. So if you want to send on an SMS campaign, it keep it really simple. You create the campaign name and then whichever gateway you're using. Um, we usually recommend Message Media or Twilio, but they have a handful of uh, ones to choose from here. And you can go ahead and send off your SMS campaigns. Um, and then lastly, you can go ahead and create engagement pop-ups for your website, similar to the lead generation pop-ups directly inside of uh, marketing automation. Next, um, these may or may not load. It's similar to Zoho PageSense, which if you use PageSense, you know these take a while to load up. But here you've basically got the sales IQ Zoho PageSense guide. Oh, they're, they're kind of loading. But here you can basically monitor your website traffic and visitors and set goals, create smart URLs, look at heat maps, uh, basically all of the features that you have inside of Zoho PageSense are kind of slimmed down inside of marketing automation, giving you some nice snapshots of your website traffic. And lastly, you have uh, your library 
where your team can go ahead and share files, attachments, images. Um, they've got Giphy directly built in, same with Google Photos and Flickr for your team to pull images for your various marketing uh, campaigns you might be doing. And it doesn't look like they're loading, but they're all here if you wanted to use them. Um, next, let's go ahead and jump into settings. So brand settings is where you would configure all of your various settings for your brand contact fields. You have your default contact fields, but if you wanted to add some custom fields, you could go ahead and do that here and sync it with your CRM. Uh, next, you have sign up pages and emails. So here you would want to go ahead and configure these. They're going to be the various pages that people see when they unsubscribe or subscribe or update their profile. You can figure that all back here, very similar to Zoho campaigns. Uh, you can set up notifications. Um, you can manage your subscriptions from back here. So it looks like there is a limit of 5,000 and a visitor count of 36 or 360,000. And I'm sure these can be adjusted as needed if you reach out to Zoho. Next, you've got your consent and privacy. So you can set up compliance settings B for all of those in the EU, set up GDPR. Um, and for HIPAA, you can go ahead and set up HIPAA compliance as well. You can go ahead and turn on cookie tracking. So to let people know that people that are visiting your website, that it's using cookies and you can go ahead and configure the banner that'll pop up on the website. You can go ahead and configure double opt-in. Um, this is mainly going to apply for those in the EU. And then you can go ahead and see the audit logs back here for your organization of the different changes that have been made. Um, user controls. You can set up portal users, invite um, users to your portal back here. You can set up different workspaces. So in this workspace, we can go ahead and see this organization. And lastly, rules and permissions. This is where you can go ahead and create a new role and kind of lock down your team on what they have access to on the back end of marketing automation. Moving along, um, we have our marketing channels. So you can turn on email tracking, click tracking, plain text tracking. Uh, you can set limits to the number of emails on a reoccurring interval. So how frequently you want to, a person can send or receive an email. Um, this will prevent maybe any mishaps that your team might do. And then in the back, this is where you'd want to go ahead and similar to the other Zoho applications, set up your DMARC and verify your domain. Um, same with SMS, you manage it on the back end back here. You can unsubscribe. And then for web, so this tracking code, which I'll go over in a second, but in case when you first turn on marketing automation, it's going to ask you to copy this code. Um, and drop it on your website. I will go ahead and show you how you do that here in a minute. And you can go ahead and set up some uh, JavaScript if you would like. You can set up some IP filters back here, domain tracking, um, page groups, and smart URLs can all be done um, on the back end here. And then your social accounts, similar to Zoho Social, you can go ahead and manage all of your social channels back here. Um, and then lastly, you can use custom API. You can connect apps. And if you click on connect apps, you can see there are a ton of different applications that integrate with marketing automation. And then lastly, you can go ahead and set a web hook up back here. So that's going to cover settings. And now let's go ahead and jump into the uh, integrations with CRM and WordPress integration. Okay, so the next part, we're going to cover the two key integrations you're gonna to wanna to set up. The first one is going to be the connection to Zoho CRM. Uh, so simply in settings, integrations, apps, we will go ahead and click on Zoho CRM. Uh, it's already connected here but you would simply go back and hit connect app and then choose Zoho CRM. 
One drawback, I don't know if it's coming soon or not, but you can only, unlike uh, Zoho campaigns where you can sync custom modules as long as they have an email, you cannot do that inside of Marketing Automation 2.0. Currently, you can only sync the leads module and this should be called Contacts, Deals and Accounts. Um, which I will go ahead and click into. You can see if you needed additional fields mapped, here's where you would come into the back end and do it. But the contacts module, it's actually the accounts and deals modules as well. So if you wanted to say like, let's say you had some custom fields you wanted to pull over to filter here inside of marketing automation, you can go ahead and add those fields to sync. By default, it does some of the generic ones, um, but you know, most, instances of CRM are custom and you're going to have fields or checkboxes inside the CRM that aren't in marketing automation or on this list that you're going to want to sync over. So that is where you manage and set up your sync to Zoho CRM. The next key feature you're going to want to sync, it's going to have, it's how it tracks your website is under marketing channels and web. You're going to want to basically take this Zoho page sense code and that's how all of these pop-up forms on your website and tracking on your website are going to work. Um, and I'm gonna, I went ahead and pulled up WordPress. So if you don't have a web developer handy, this is the back end of Podcaster Zen, but we can just go ahead and pick our theme editor under themes and you're gonna wanna click theme file editor. So assuming you have some sort of theme you're going to want to, if you check here, it says it wants it in the head. So you would basically copy this code or send via email to your web master and then click on the header PHP section. And as you can see here, I went ahead and dropped it in, but you're going to want to have it right in between the head and end head um, tags there. So those are the two integrations you're going to want to set up. And if, if you're confused about this, just send it to your webmaster. They'll know exactly what to do with it. Um, and then once you have it installed, we can go ahead and see if it worked. And it'll have a little pop-up window and it will say verified. So that's gonna wrap it up for this section. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next where I will go over email marketing. All right, so now let's jump into a feature that pretty much all of us here are using marketing automation for, and that is email marketing. So there's multiple elements in this section that I'm going to cover. The first thing you're going to want to set up inside under contacts, very similar to campaigns is topics. Topics are essentially uh, describing to your end users, you know, what different content you might be sending out to them. So in this case, we have marketing and newsletter, but you could also add like promotions. And if you haven't caught on yet, uh, we do do podcast production under Podcast Zen. So if you're interested in uh, getting your podcast up and running, we would be happy to uh, help you along with that. But as you can see, so we have promotions, newsletter, marketing. So when I say I had a sign up form and I'm coming in and I want to choose which content I want to receive, you can go ahead and manage that through your topics here. So when I send out a newsletter, I'm only going to send it to people interested in the latest podcast news, or maybe I only want to learn about upcoming promotions and I'm not interested in the newsletter. I can just receive the promotions. So here's a great way for you to manage the different content you're going to be sending out and giving users an option to unsubscribe from content they don't want to receive rather than just unsubscribing from everything. Uh, the next part we're going to discuss is lists. So list is, you should never buy your list. I'm just throwing that out there. But if you do, or let's say you have a massive spreadsheet, you should always run it through a clear out verification process first, but you can go ahead and import your list here. So example list. And we can go ahead and add contacts and import like say a CSV file or Excel uh, document directly into uh, marketing automation here. 
Although I preach this all the time, I am a firm believer in one source of truth for your data. Um, and it should exist in CRM. So they have this great feature called segments, um, very similar to campaigns. This will be looking directly at your CRM and pulling in contacts and leads from your CRM. So as fields or as data changes in your CRM, it will update and reflect properly here. So say we had a newsletter mailing list newsletter segments, I should say. Inside the CRM, if we had a field called newsletter is subscribed, then we would go ahead and pick that here. We don't have that field though, so we're not gonna be able to show that, but this is essentially where you set up your segments that dynamically update as things change in your CRM. So as you're getting ready to send off emails or create journeys, they should be based upon segments for the most part. Um, so that as things change inside the CRM, you're going to have an up-to-date list or segment that is sending out to your users. Uh, so now that we've gone over topic management and segments, the next thing we're going to want to do is maybe send an email campaign. So to send an email campaign, you simply click on marketing campaigns, email, and then we can go ahead and create a campaign. So webinar demo and say we're sending a promotion so we're going to send it to everyone in our promotions and here you can choose what type of email you're sending is it going to be a basic email are you sending a survey or promoting an event a webinar or maybe you have shopify or woocommerce set up and you want to set up an e-commerce uh, store engagement email uh, you can do so here Let's just check a simple email. And what we can do here is just like campaigns, it's got a different UI, but a lot of the features are the same. So you're gonna choose your recipients and we're gonna choose a list. Do this is not a test. Um, and there's no contacts, so I won't be able to fully walk you through this, but you can set up A-B testing, which if you did, you can go ahead and turn when you turn this on, it'll give you the option to create two pieces of content for you to test. Uh, enter the subject line for your email. And you can go ahead and edit that there. The pre header is the text that appears when you first see an email, but when you open it, it's going to disappear. So no, we've ended. And offer and then you choose your sender details so this is for podcasters in and then we'd go ahead and add our content um, and here you can choose from a handful of templates that Zoho has created uh, you can choose some pre-built layouts that are just using the builder but we'll follow this format um, ready to go for you to edit um, if you have HTML or plain text, you can go ahead and build those um, directly here. Uh, let's go ahead and use a template builder though for this example. We'll just go with this first one. And as you can see, the builder is very similar to Zoho campaigns. In fact, it's identical. So if you use Zoho campaigns, the email builder is the same. So once we have our content ready to go and edited, we can go ahead and hit save. And then once we, ha if we had some contacts in here, you can choose, you know, how frequently you want to send it in bulk, or if you want to schedule it out later, or if you wanted to send it now. So response actions are actually a great way to capture additional information or utilize how people interact with your emails to create a task or uh, maybe use them for future marketing efforts. So like, let's say this email campaign actually had a survey and they filled out a survey. Maybe we would want to add them to a list. You know, they clicked on this link here, took them to a survey and we know that it went to a survey. So, you know, I went ahead and created a list called filled out survey. So this is an example of when you would use a list instead of a segment, because now we have a list of people that we might want to market to again in the future based on an email campaign we had sent out or some sort of campaign we sent out. 
there's lots of different activities you can choose from to add values to, whether it's, you know, the list that we just store, maybe it's updating a field or assigning a tag, or maybe we want to add them directly to a journey. You know, we don't have any journeys built yet, which we're about to jump into, but you know, I could completely bypass adding them to a list and then the list, you know, being part of the reason they start that journey. Uh, you can configure that all here under actions. So there's a lot of different things you can do as far as email campaigns go, but I'd say just mess around with them and, uh, you know, explore what different features works best for you. But for most, most users, you know, the basic simple email, getting your email out to your end users is what most people are going to be after. Uh, next, we can go ahead and look at journeys. So journeys are essentially, if you use campaigns, these are your workflows. You know, these are going to be your drip campaigns. So let's do say a uh, podcaster is in a uh, newsletter. Welcome. Drip. So for this example, let's say they just signed up to podcaster Zen's newsletter and we want to send them a welcome uh, drip campaign. So we can just actually use, we'll use this pre-made drip campaign here. We'll use this template. And I'm going to kind of give you a run through of, you know, the different elements to a drip campaign. So first you're going to need a trigger. This is how are they entering this drip essentially. So here we can see they have a form submission or added to a list, but we would actually, we just talked about having a segment. So we would actually find the segment field and move, drag it over. And if they were added to the newsletter segment, you know, we would go ahead and pick um, the newsletter segment and save. And now anyone coming in from the newsletter segment, we can get rid of these other guys, are going to enter this uh, trip. And I think they have a setup for 10 days. So, you know, immediately after on day one, they're going to receive the first email. But maybe we want it, you know, only on certain days. So we can go ahead and choose, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursdays. We know those have the highest engagement. So they're going to go ahead and receive the first email. And then you can simply just click on the different elements. And here you'd go ahead and create your email. So, and then, you know, we got three days later, another email goes out and five days, another email. And then we can go ahead and update a contact field, um, letting us know they finished this. Or, you know, we could also add them to a list saying that they received the podcasters and newsletter welcome drip. And this would be a perfect another example of one to use a list. And then, you know, when you set the uh, exit criteria, we can go ahead and say that the list is you know, um, well, you'd want to create a new list, but let's say it's example list. So we know that their exit criteria, they will be removed if they completed this. So for whatever example, whatever reason, let's say we clone this and then a bunch of people were going through this all over again. A quick way to prevent that is, you know, they are added to a list here and we now know that they cannot enter this workflow because it's an exit criteria if they're on this list. So it's a great way to prevent uh, multiple people receiving, going through the same workflow again, in case things were mass updated in the CRM and you accidentally re-trigger this. So there you have your triggers and then you have your processes sometimes. Like let's say we want a process where based on this email, you know, they can trigger different, like, did they click on a link? Maybe we want them to get a different email. Or maybe I'm sending this for the first time to 20,000 people. So maybe I want a random split where I have, you know, 50% starting here, but then another 50% starting on another time delay of two days later. So I'm not sending out that many emails at once. And if you're sending to 50,000 people, you're probably going to want more than just one split, but you get the idea. And then next we have our engagement so we can send an email or an SMS or add them to a list, assign tags for, uh, you know, set up other weight conditions um, if needed. 
remove them or move them to another journey. You can also push data to the CRM, create a deal or create a task. So a lot of power inside of these workflows. I could go on and on, but for the sake of this webinar and time, um, that's kind of a quick run through of uh, the journey features here inside of marketing automation. And that's going to wrap it up for this section. Um, next, let's go ahead and take a brief look at lead generation. Okay, so the next section I'm going to cover is lead generation. These are how you can generate leads to come into your uh, Zoho instance here um, directly from marketing automation. So there's three different options that marketing automation gives you. Sign up forms, which is going to be very similar to Zoho forms. That's so just embedding a form on your website. Um, then pop-ups, which I briefly touched in the beginning. And as you can see, the pop-up form is now popping up on our podcaster Zen website. And then lastly, our landing pages, um, which is like Zoho landing pages to create a landing page for people to visit. And it kind of creates a funnel where they can only, you know, go through that landing page to uh, complete the form. We'll start with the sign up form. So I'll do a quick demonstration here, how it works. Now, if you're on Zoho One, I would probably still use Zoho Forms, and you'll see why in a second. It just has more capabilities, but there are some nice features if you're especially um, still a long form. If you're wanting to do topic management for that initial email engagement, so you can go ahead and see that they have some fields here that you can draw, drag and drop over, like date of birth, um, you can also create and add custom fields. So maybe like a, I wanted to use a multi-select pick list like region. And we can say north, well, north, south, east, west. And, uh, and there already was a region. Um, so you can go ahead and drag and drop. But you can also add and we're going to, since we have multiple topics, we can also drag and drop. This would be a great place for now that they want the newsletter, you know, maybe they, they are subscribing to the newsletter on this form, but would you like to receive any other email topics? So you can go ahead and add that. And that's where this form would come in handy if you wanted to do your topic management as well here. And then just like everything else, you have your your editor where you can change the heading color to, you know, gray or whatever, however you want to design it. It's kind of a limited, um, but you know, it's a cool feature add to have directly inside of marketing automation. So we can go ahead and save and proceed. And then we can go ahead and configure which topics. So since this is the newsletter form, that let's say they they're subscribing to our newsletter click here any additional topics so we're going to automatically assign them to this topic and like the response actions we just covered you can go ahead and configure more uh, response actions when they sign up and submit maybe you want to create a task or add them to a list um, whatever it may be and you can also push this data to the crm you know update existing contacts or create uh, update existing and push new. You're almost, I can't think of a time you're not going to want to update this, but you're going to want to make sure you have this configured because this data definitely should exist inside of the CRM if you're using the marketing automation forms. And then once you're ready, you can go ahead and launch your form and it'll give you various options for you to embed it on your website, whether it's an iframe, you can drop this code in, no CSS, et cetera, raw HTML, you can drop it into your website. Uh, usually iframes are a quick, easy way to go. Uh, so that is the forms. And next you have the pop-ups, which we can see the pop-ups work with just like they're described. They're gonna be a pop-up when you visit a website. So if I refresh and we're on the website, it will pop up just like that. So you can go ahead and create pop-ups for your website here. 
And then lastly, like Zoho landing pages, you can create a custom landing page for your services. So you can go ahead and choose one of the pre-built templates or use one from scratch. And just another way for them to visit a unique landing page without you having to have all of the skills needed to build a custom landing page that they can go ahead and visit that, you know, is sole purpose is to capture um, some information or, or push them to a shopping cart or something along those lines with those landing pages. Very similar to Zoho sites in this editor with landing page, you can go ahead and create your landing pages um, for your users to visit. So three great tools, all um, pre-built into marketing automation that, and like I said before, you push to the data to CRM, which I would highly recommend and set up response actions. And then it gives you a landing page um, URL. So it's going to be a Zoho landing page.com though, uh, subdomain, or you're going to be the subdomain on Zoho landing page.com. And then we can publish this now. And you can essentially add this URL to maybe some of the email or drip campaigns you are uh, running. So cool, cool feature to have, especially for those that are not super uh, tech savvy. And then lastly, let's go ahead and take a look at website analytics. All right, in the last section of this webinar, we're almost done. We're gonna cover the website analytics. This is essentially Zoho PageSense built into marketing automation. If you've used PageSense in before, I have nothing bad to say, but I would say there's other tools out there that work better, like Google Analytics, for example, even Jetpack. But it's a way for you to track your different uh, metrics of your website. So as you can see, it is taking some time to load, but it'll give you, you know, your visitors, which types of devices they're using when they visit, you know, regions, which doesn't seem to be populating properly. Next, you have behavior, you know, how many people are visiting per day, you know, known or anonymous. Um, and I'll kind of give you that breakdown. These do take a while to load, so I might just skip over them. Oh, there we go. Second one's still loading, but you can kind of see the traffic and number of visitors you've had on your websites, acquisition, the different channels, which we don't have configured yet, but they are oh, direct and referrals, what they're looking at here. And you can go ahead and create goals, which we'll go into now. Um, so referral is someone was sent a link and direct was they directly went over to your website by typing it in here in the URL. Uh, next, we have goals and we can go ahead and create goals. So you can track on your website. Maybe you wanna track how many times a certain element is clicked or certain links on your website or the amount of time they spent on a page. You can go ahead and say, uh, you know, services time spent. So I want to see how long they spent on our services page. So I would simply go over here, click on our services, which is actually the home page, And they need to spend at least 10 seconds. And then we can go ahead and add them to a list. Create a new list, service, follow up. Now keep in mind, this will only work if and only if I can add them to a list is let's say when I refresh the page on the home page here, if I had filled out and not an incognito, if I had filled out this form and now Zoho has my email, our database has the email and it has my IP address associated with that email to know that when I spent 10 seconds there, it'll generate that report. However, if you don't have that, it's not going to be able to capture who it was, but they'll at least know some people spent, you know, over 10 seconds on that page. Uh, and then lastly, this is a super cool feature because I know a lot of us like QR codes, but it, like, let's say you wanted to create a QR code and use one of the landing pages you created, whether it's your own or using Zoho landing pages, 
I think this is the one feature of the website analytics that would actually be used a lot, but you can go ahead and create a smart URL, taking a very long URL, shrinking it down, tracking the statistics for it, and you can even get a QR code to put on your marketing efforts, whether it's a flyer or email campaign, this will generate a QR code for you. So this is a super cool built-in tool. I'm not gonna fill these all out on this webinar, but you get the idea where you can go ahead and create a short link and QR code. And like if the medium, for example, and source, like you choose Facebook, um, and then the medium is social, it pre-populates that for you there. If you ever see like the question mark at the end, you know, salt medium equals that's kind of pop pre-populating those fields there for you. So yeah, that is going to essentially wrap up marketing automation 2.0. Thank you so much, everyone that joined us today or joined us, joined me today for this, uh, full breakdown on marketing automation. I hope I answered all of your questions and covered all of the core elements you were looking to learn about. If you have any questions though, don't hesitate to drop them in uh, the comment section below or give me some feedback. Um, also, you could head over to our online community club.zanata.com over there where you'll find more additional resources and you can drop your questions over there. Uh, if you need additional resources around Zoho Marketing Automation or any other Zoho application, visit our resource library. Please, please, please hit that like and subscribe button, and we will see you next month on our next Zoho full product overview. Until next time, have a great day, everyone.